Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are tuning in uh, to A Voice from the Ever Change. Thank you for joining. Uh, so today I'm going to offer a guided meditation and do something a little bit different. Uh, I know I've done this on this program uh, a few weeks ago, uh, but uh, it's different than the normal meditation format in that uh, we'll start with the sense of hearing and then we'll, we'll rest with hearing and the silence of the present moment and we'll come back through the body and then the breath like that. So generally, traditionally, meditation is offered a uh, breath, starting with the breath and then sometimes expanding out to the body and then sometimes to the sounds. Uh, but I have found great benefit uh, in practicing with the starting with the sounds and the silence and coming back to the body and breath. It's very, very helpful uh, to meditate in that way if you feel like you're having a lot of tension in the body or trauma or stress or anxiety in the body, mind or heart. If you start with the sounds and the silence and you come back to the body and breath, you've already kind of given your awareness kind of a head start uh, in grounding into the present moment with an external before coming back into the body and working with uh, some of the anxiety that's there, the trauma or tension. So that can be quite beneficial. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this, uh, the reading tonight comes from, again, from my book, A Voice from the Ever Change, hence the title of the video series. Uh, this reading is um, the second to the last in the uh, chapter on resting. And it'll be the last offering that I give from the resting chapter, actually. Now, if you've received a book from me, a PDF book from me already, uh, you'll re be receiving another one. <laughs> I'm gonna go back through, I've mailed out several, uh, but I'm gonna go back through the emails and send out an updated version because I left out a chapter, how embarrassing. Uh, the chapter on impermanence was somehow left out of the final edit. So I've uh, put that in today and we'll have that uh, sent out tomorrow morning, so you'll be able to follow, because that's the next chapter in the book. So if you're following along, uh, you'll have it. It's actually my, well, I love the whole book, actually, but I think the, the chapter on impermanence uh, is integral to, the, to this book because this, the title, The Ever Change, is all about impermanence. Uh, so we really um, go very, very deeply into the concept of an ever-changing universe in the next chapter. But enough about that. Uh, <laughs> so coming back to resting. Now, the resting meditation that I'm referring to in these talks uh, on resting is a traditional practice from the Dzogchen tradition, the Tibetan uh, Buddhist tradition of Dzogchen. But it's very, I've, I've completely secularized it. Uh, so there's no religious connotation to it. There's no uh, deities or anything like that. It's, it's a completely uh, uh, pragmatic technique. And so I won't be guiding that practice today. It's on my website, uh, suchsweetthunder.org. Uh, so feel free to visit there uh, for the resting practice. I've also, I also did one uh, two weeks ago tonight on this series. So if you scroll back, I think it's episode, I don't know, 12 or 13. If you scroll back a few uh, and find the resting practice there, I, I do a full guided resting. But uh, here, uh, the commentary is all about resting. And actually, the poem is only three words. The poem is resting in aversion. That's the poem. So here this evening, I'll guide us from the sounds, the body and breath into the silent space. We'll just rest in silence for a few moments. I'll offer up the poem and the commentary on resting. Allow the words to the poem, the words to the commentary to guide your awareness. It's really an extension of the guided meditation. 
So then we'll just rest at the end of the commentary for a few moments, then I'll ring the bell, and I'll probably do some talking after that. I generally get inspired while I'm guiding, and then I just start uh, talking about whatever's on my mind or in my heart at that point. None of that's scripted, it's all improvised. And uh, actually many people have found that to be uh, quite beneficial. I've gotten some comments on, they say they really like the, uh, the, the section at the end there when I'm just uh, saying what's on my mind. So much for written rehearsal. <laughs> I guess my improvisation skills are something of a strong suit. Anyway, um, tomorrow is my Q&A, so if there are any questions about what you've heard or what you're hearing here in the series, or really about meditation practice or anything in general. If you have any questions, do send those along. I'll be uh, addressing maybe two or three questions tomorrow, uh, time permitting. Okay, that's all I need to say. It's meditation time, uh, so I'll ring the bell and I'll do some guiding. Enjoy. Allowing the body, mind, and heart to rest, coming into this present moment experience. And in the silent space of this meditation, I'll ring the bell. Rest your thinking mind on the sound of the bell. Allow the decay of the sound to guide your awareness into silence. And I'll ring the bell again. And again, rest your thinking mind on the sound of the bell. And as the bell fades, allow your mind to rest in the silent space. And while your mind is resting in the silence, notice any sounds which might seem as if they're emerging from the silent space. Not focusing on any one sound, but simply noticing the field of sound and silence. Now ring the sound of the bell one more time. Rest your thinking mind on the sound of the bell. Allow the decay of the bell to guide your mind into silence.
and with the mind resting in that silent space, noticing any sounds which might be available. You might notice how that silent stillness seems to surround each sound. And while resting in the silent stillness, the sounds of the present moment, you might also notice sensations of the feet against the mat or the floor. Sensations of clothing against the legs. You might notice the weight of the body against the chair or cushion, mat or floor. There might also be sensations against the back. And you might also notice sensations of hands resting against or touching each other. Noticing the arms resting against the body. Sensations of clothing against the shoulders. There might also be sensations arising from the back of the neck, the sides of the neck. Perhaps noticing sensations arising from the back of the head, the ears, allowing awareness to expand into the cheeks of the face, noticing any sensations arising from the face, including the lips, the nose, the eyes, sensations arising throughout the forehead, resting attention at the top of the head, noticing any sensations arising from the crown of the head. And so we'll rest right there, noticing or resting in the experience of sound and silence, sensations arising throughout the body. And just rest. And if at any time during the meditation you become distracted by your thoughts, simply labeling those thoughts thinking, which will allow the thoughts to dissolve, and gently return back to the present moment experience. Now resting here with the silence and sound, the sensations arising throughout the body, bring attention to the breath as it enters and leaves the nose. Perhaps noticing a cool or a dry sensation at the nostrils or simply noticing the temperature changing from cooler to warmer as you inhale and exhale. Noticing the sensations touching the back of the throat. You might also notice the rib cage expanding and contracting with each breath. The rising and falling of the abdomen as you inhale and exhale. There might be sensations of the back moving out 
as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. Noticing the shoulders rising and falling with each breath. And so we'll rest right there just for a few moments. Resting in this open, spacious awareness, the silence and sound, body and breath, and just rest. Breathing in and breathing out. The poem, Resting in Aversion. The Commentary. Whenever life presents us with an experience that doesn't live up to our expectations, fit into our belief system, or brings us what we desire, we feel a tension, a certain type of stressed feeling, a pushing away of the present moment. That unpleasant feeling tone of this experience is the same in varying degrees of intensity, regardless of what is causing the discomfort. This is a clear sign that the discomfort which we experience cannot be generated by the external stimulus because that is constantly changing. Yet that same gnawing, grating irritation still arises. When we look a little closer, we see that the discomfort comes from within our own body, mind, and heart. In reaction, to what is occurring externally. As soon as we feel the gnawing ache, this rub, the burn of irritation and discomfort, the thoughts and stories begin to spin. I don't want this right now, or this shouldn't be happening, or I don't deserve this. This is the moment in which we may notice how we push away and recognize that we really don't have to push away at all. It is, after all, just a gnawing ache. What if we could rest in the experience of this aversion? At this moment of aversion, remember to come back to the breath. Feel the breath entering and leaving the nose. Notice the temperature changing from cooler to warmer as you inhale and exhale. Notice the rising and falling of the chest and abdomen, the sensations of clothing on the skin, the sensations of your feet against the floor. In this very moment, we can recognize that it is our thoughts about the stimulus which keep that grating, irritating rub of aversion in place. We make the mistake of blaming the external occurrences for our suffering, when in fact, it is all arising within our own body and mind. At the moment of recognition, let the thoughts subside. We can do this by labeling the thoughts with the word thinking and then letting the thoughts pass. Then bringing awareness back to the body, 
feel that pinching ache of aversion, the gnawing rub of, I wish this moment were different. Notice all of the sensations which correspond to the emotional aversion. Then expand awareness out from the tension in the body, in the mind, in the heart, to include all of the sounds arising all around you. Perhaps you hear people talking nearby, or music playing, or birds singing. Notice the entire canopy of sounds cascading through awareness. Then bring into the experience other bodily sensations, the cool breeze on the skin, the clothing moving to adjust across your body with the breathing process, the weight of your body against the chair. Notice the play of shadow, color, light, and space in your visual field. Hold the experience of aversion and the entire present moment in awareness. By allowing awareness to be expansive, vast, and open, we unplug the emotional reactivity embedded in the thoughts of this shouldn't be happening, or why is this happening to me, or I wish this present moment were different. Without those thoughts fueling the emotional reactive process, the reactivity arises and passes like clouds passing through the vast blue sky. The emotional reactivity may remain for a little while, but without the fuel of our thoughts, the aversion will eventually fade away. The same process can be done with desire, attraction, anger, fear, cravings, and attachment as well. It is important to remember that there is nothing inherently wrong with wanting the forms arising within the present moment to be different or better. The suffering arises when we fall into an emotionally charged reactive pattern as a result of that desire. For example, there's nothing wrong with wanting the couple behind us to stop talking while we're watching a concert. The suffering arises when I stand up and shout at them to shut up, <laughs> threaten them in some way, or storm off angrily. We are actually not reacting to the talking couple, but there we are reacting to how the discomfort feels in our own body when people talk to each other and distract us from this performance that we're enjoying. Then anger may arise, but it is in reaction to the discomfort in your own body. With that anger comes the habitual reactions of yelling, kicking, punching, screaming, or shouting, and suffering is born. The idea here is to allow ourselves to observe the chain reaction and rest in the reactivity prior to the, rea prior to the rise of the reactivity which inevitably leads to suffering. So the question now becomes, can I allow myself a sense of resting in the aversion that's arising? Can I become comfortable with how anger or desire or craving or aversion feels in my body without reacting to it? Resting in that gnawing ache of aversion will allow for the natural cessation of that ache back into the pristine awareness from which it arose. The aversion self-liberates. That self-liberation of aversion also has a corresponding sensation in the body a lightness in the body perhaps, or perhaps a sense of complete resting or freedom. Embrace this sensation 
of cessation and know it fully. For this moment is nothing other than nirvana. Thank you for joining me on episode 23 of A Voice from the Ever Change. I hope you found uh, the poem, the three-word poem there, resting in a version, and the commentary uh, helpful. Again, if you would like to explore this idea of resting uh, in whatever is arising in the present moment, there is a resting meditation, a guided resting meditation on my website. It's also on my YouTube channel. And I did one here in this series about two weeks ago. So if you scroll back, uh, you can find uh, my guiding a resting meditation. Uh, this isn't a meditation that I created. I, I learned this meditation in my uh, Tibetan meditation studies. Uh, but it is a completely secular practice. There's no religious connotation to it at all. Completely pragmatic. Now, resting into the present moment. There are a couple of techniques that I mentioned in the guided meditation, but I'll mention them here now. Uh, because we actually use these while, while one is meditating or during everyday life experience, and, and I find it to be quite beneficial. And so whenever you notice that your tension, you're holding on to attention in the body or in the mind or in the heart, uh, perhaps you're watching the news and you start to think, oh, this shouldn't be happening, this is terrible. Ask yourself in that moment, can I rest with this? And just pose that question. You don't have to answer it right away, but allow the silence to, to arise. So can I rest with this? And see how your body, your mind, and your heart responds to the question. And sometimes the answer is actually quite obviously yes. The body starts to relax, the mind, the heart starts to relax, and you're, ah, right. You're back in the present moment. You're resting in the present moment experience. Now, arguably, that doesn't make what's happening on the news or whatever it is, the external uh, change in any way, but our relationship to it changes. And when we can rest into the present moment, we can, more, uh, we can be more responsive to the present moment, whatever's arising, rather than reactive to the present moment. When we're responsive, we're, we're generally acting through present moment awareness. We're much less likely to cause ourself and others suffering when we move out of a resting space to address what's arising. So that can be one allowing us to bring this practice into life right now, right at this moment. Perhaps you're listening to this talk and you hear, uh, you feel rather, 
an ache in your shoulder, to a knee-jerk reaction. We fall into reactivity. And so when that happens, uh, we're much more likely to cause suffering. We fall into habits, we cling to something as a way of relieving that discomfort rather than moving into present moment awareness and moving out of that discomfort with mindfulness. So that's just one, you can ask yourself, what am I resisting right now? That can also be a very effective way of coming back into the present moment. We're, we, we, again, maybe we see something on the news and we, there's a tension in the heart, in the body or in the mind. You can ask yourself, what am I resisting? Is resistance necessary at this present moment? Ah, no, I don't need to resist anything right now. I'm here, I'm sitting, I'm talking, everything's good. Nothing to resist. So the body softens, the, the mind and, and heart relax it back into the present moment. And then again, moving forward from that resting space. And so I wanted to offer this this evening. I know I've been talking a lot about resting in uh, aversion or resting with challenging emotions or resting into the present moment. So important, so important and so, uh, so easy to, to practice in this world climate because all we have to do is turn on the news and we can challenge ourselves, <laughs> right? All we have to do is sit and, and think about how much we'd like to go to the movies or go meet a friend or, or go have coffee with a loved one. That, that tension, this shouldn't be happening. I wish the present moment was different. I wish this was happening. Whatever it is, can I rest with this? Then the mind remembers, oh right, I'm, I'm practicing uh, social distancing to help humanity because I'm saving lives every time I stay home. I'm not spreading this virus. Or, oh right, I can watch uh, a voice from the ever change. Chris is giving his meditation session right now. Maybe I can tune into that or maybe there's an online yoga program or a workout program or cooking program or whatever it is, watching your friends do a live music show. But now we're moving forward with awareness. And that's really the idea, that's really the key here, is coming back each time to the present moment and moving forward with mindfulness. So I think that's all I wanna say this evening. Thank you for joining me. Uh, that was episode 23 of A Voice from the Ever Change. Um, please, 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 wherever you are, stay healthy. Wash your hands. Sanitizing with alcohol. Please practice your social distancing. Two, I always say three meters apart because then it gives you an extra meter to play with. Two meters apart if you can. Um, and, you know, be rude if you have to. But, but if your rudeness is saving lives... Be rude, say, hey, get out of my space. You're, you're a foot away from me. Whatever it is you need to do, maintain that social distancing. Very, very important right now. Uh, we have to help humanity and help our, our healthcare workers who are fighting day and night, some 17, 18, 19 hour days on the front lines in the hospitals there. We gotta flatten that curve so that they can, uh, they can work and, and, and help us. Okay, that's my soapbox. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Much love, much light.